Good evening. Welcome back to Capital Side, a statewide look at politics. I'm Tim Boyum. Tuesday, the U.S. House passed a bill sponsored by North Carolina Republican Robert Pittenger. It tackles a mix of technology and your money. Yesterday, a chance to talk with Representative Pittenger about that bill and the latest and greatest from Washington. Congressman Pittenger, uh, great to have you on the show from our nation's capital. Thank you so much. Uh, first, uh, describe your uh, bill for us so if people haven't heard about it. Well, our Reg D bill is a real good consumer bill. Uh, it was an outdated regulation that was uh, placed in the 1980s, 30 years ago. Uh, put a requirement that uh, you could only have six transfers out of your bank account from savings to checking. Well, that's really outmoded. We're in the electronic age. So this was a study bill for the Government Accountability Office and uh, would allow them to study and see how many transfers are are possible. We have to maintain certain monetary reserves in there for the Federal Reserve, but we feel like this is a very doable bill. It passed in the in the uh, committee, and of course, it now passed in the House unanimously uh, yesterday. So th this impacts individual bank accounts as well. Yes, absolutely. That's what it's for. It's a consumer-driven bill. It says that you won't be charged extra by uh, transferring more than six transfers out of your account. Uh, right now, you will be. And so, I mean, there's certain accounts to do and certain don't. It's very confusing, but for the most part, most uh, consumers have to pay an, adi an additional fee uh, if they transfer more than six times out of their account. And this will lift that uh, to a, a, a number that is more uh, reasonable, and the uh, Government Accountability Office will help determine that. Was the original purpose for this uh, just stability? Is that what we were getting at before within the, 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 the financial backing of this country? Absolutely. The purpose was through the monetary system was to make sure that we had enough reserves, financial reserves, inside our financial institutions. Well, every, with everything done now electronically, that's very easy to monitor. So this will not be a problem, and we should be able to get this uh, done and, and give some relief to the American consumers. It's surprising in some ways that it, it has been this long since a bill like this came up. I mean, I guess how did you come up with wanting to do this, and, and what has taken so long in some instances? It's crazy to me. There's so many regulations out there. We're just we, I try to do everything inside the financial service system that I can to bring relief to small consumers to allow the uh, uh, flow of capital uh, to be there so that it's, it's uh, approachable and we don't have the government micromanaging our systems. And uh, this passed the House, obviously, unanimously. I mean, so the, it appears this is uh, got clear sailing on the Senate side as well? well? You would hope so, but as you recall, we passed 387 bills out of the House, many bipartisan like mine who have gone to the Senate and sat on Harry Reid's desk. We're negotiating on the number of financial service bills that we hope that we can get passed that have all passed with full bipartisan support. All right, let's move on uh, to some topics of the day, I guess, as well. Uh, uh, Ashton Carter is said to be the pick for President Obama for uh, Department of Defense Secretary. What's your take on this pick if it is indeed end up being that? Well, what I've heard from Mr. Carter is good. It is of some obvious concern to me that we, the president has already gone through three uh, secretaries of defenses. He's had several turn down the option more, more recently. Uh, it, it really shows, I think, clearly the mismanagement of our foreign policy. Uh, I meet with world leaders, heads of state throughout the world, and they don't know where we stand. They don't understand American foreign policy or, frankly, or the lack of it. Uh, we have no real... Um, commitments out there that the, our adversaries or our friends really understand who we are and, and what, what our commitments are. So I think that we need a certainty. Uh, the new Secretary of Defense, uh, his role is, of course, to enact the will of the Commander-in-Chief. We hope that we will have greater clarity from the Commander-in-Chief over the next two years and that this uh, new Secretary of Defense will be able to, be able to uh, give good, sound uh, capabilities for America's security. So you think Carter is a pick that, that uh, could get through uh, a, a process, basically, uh, at the Capitol? Well, a number of folks who have worked with him for many years uh, uh, like him, and we'll see how that process works its way out. But the first indications have been very favorable, and he has had good reports. 
All right, let's talk about immigration. There's some talk about uh, the House trying to undo the uh, executive action that the president took. Uh, there's some talk, I guess, about when that might happen. I'm assuming you're in favor of any efforts to try to undo that? Well, certainly. Um, clearly, this is a uh, crisis of our Constitution. Uh, our founding fathers never designed for the uh, president to be able to have these types of egregious executive orders. He's taken it exponentially uh, to Im impacting policy unlike any other president. So I think in every way we can, uh, we should restore the balance of power. This is what this is really about. If the president, like a monarch, can change a law uh, according to his own design and wishes, in this case he can do that in any other case, whether it's uh, tax policy or uh, dealing with uh, any fiscal issue, budget issue of, of our country. So uh, this is an important factor. And frankly, um, we're concerned, of course, of the impact of, of what will happen with uh, allowing 4.5 million people to be legal here now in this country. It will open up our, our borders. Uh, we will not have the rule of law. As you know, uh, I speak on a regular basis at the federal courthouse to the um, individuals who come here and go through our naturalization process. And those individuals, frankly, are uh, there and they've gone through and they have supported our legal system. And this is of great concern to me that we're allowing now a, a whole new breed of people to come through without the rule of law. So we have uh, what is likely to be gridlock over the next two years with a Republican Congress and a Democratic president. Why should we have any hope that anything's going to get done that will help the American people? Sure, that's a great question. I think what you're going to find out, like the 387 bills, many of which are bipartisan, out of the House of Representatives that have gone to Senator Reid's desk and sat there, you're going to see a commitment from the Senate to pass good policy. And this policy will enable, will enable us to move forward and put in front of the President of the United States uh, those uh, policies that will uh, help our economy and, and create jobs. Uh, he will have that option. He will have those bills in front of him. He hasn't had those bills in front of him uh, in the last uh, four years because Harry Reid has, pre has prevented that from occurring. Uh, we will have the ability now to, to help lead our country and to, and to put reasonable uh, policies in front of the president, reasonable legislation that are bipartisan, affecting uh, uh, job growth, affecting our economy, affecting tax policy. We're the highest tax uh, country in the world in terms of corporations. That doesn't create jobs and they leave America's shores. So we can create these good policies. We can have good energy policy. We have greater energy resources than any country in the world. We can bipartisan uh, way put this in front of the President of the United States and let him make that decision. All right. Well, I know you need to get uh, back to the Capitol for a vote, so we appreciate your time as always, sir. Uh, good to see you and I hope to see you when we come up in January for the swearing in.